Tom here at Sharpening Supplies, and today we're going to be talking about sharpening your kitchen knives. Getting ready to sharpen your kitchen knives for the first time can be a little overwhelming because there are a lot of different sharpening options out there. This video is going to help you find the option that is best for your needs. We're going to go through all of these different kinds of sharpeners. We're going to talk about what's good in each category, what's not so good, who we think would be a good fit for this category, and then recommend a couple of sharpeners that we think work really well. We're going to start with guided sharpeners. Guided sharpeners work by clamping the knife usually in some jaws, holding it steady, and then the abrasives run along a pivoting arm that you can set at a particular angle. The great thing about guided sharpeners is the precision. Because you can set the angle and you don't need to rely on holding the knife in a particular way, you can sharpen it very precisely. Really precise sharpening means that you're going to remove less metal while you sharpen, which means it's going to be quicker and your knives will last longer. These systems also come with a range of grips. So you can usually start with a very coarse grit if you've got quite blunt knives and go all the way up to some fairly fine grits. Or if your knife isn't that blunt, you can start in a middle grit. You've got some nice options with guided sharpeners. Along with a range of grits, a few of these sharpeners will come with accessories for sharpening things like serrated knives, which is handy if your bread knife needs a touch up. There are a few downsides to guided sharpening systems. The first one would probably be that they need a little bit of time for you to set everything up. So an impromptu sharpening session when you're in the middle of cooking isn't quite so likely. There's a little bit of a learning curve to them, mainly to just getting them all set up, but they're pretty easy to use once they're set up. There are also limits to the size and shape of the knives that can fit in guided sharpeners. Won't be an issue for most chef's knives, but if you've got a knife that is longer or wider or thicker than average, some of these systems might not hold it quite so well. So you'd want to check what you're going to be sharpening and which system you're matching it with first. While these sharpening systems do come with a range of grits, some of them come with more grits than others. So if you're buying into a particular system, you might be able to expand that kit or you might only have a limited number of grits available for you. They all come with enough grits to do a really good job on your kitchen knives. But if you want to get up into those extremely fine grits, a few of these systems will do that. A few of these systems stop at slightly lower grits. Guided sharpeners are great for people that want precise and repeatable results without having to invest a lot of time into building sharpening skills. If you've got a small number of kitchen knives, maybe you're only sharpening one or two of them, then these will be great because you can leave them set up for those particular knives. A few different popular guided sharpeners include the Lansky guided sharpeners, the WorkSharp Precision Adjust, we've got the Edge Pro Apex here, and then we've got the Wicked Edge system as well. We've got links to all of these in the description below. Next, we're looking at electric sharpeners. They come in a few different shapes and sizes, but they all work in a similar way. They'll have a motor-driven abrasive. Some of them will have an adjustable angle guide. Some of them will have set angle guides. But quite simply, you turn them on, run the knife through the guide, and that's about it. The great thing about electric sharpeners is that they're fast. Because you've got a motor-driven abrasive, that abrasive is going to be moving over your knife edge quite quickly, so it will sharpen really quickly. They're also really fast to set up. You can usually just take them out of the box, plug them in, and then you're pretty much ready to sharpen. Great if you've got a busy kitchen where you're in the middle of chopping and you want to put a little bit of an extra edge on your knife, you can just turn on an electric sharpener and go. There are a few downsides to electric sharpeners. Most of them will only have two or maybe three different grits available to them. So you're kind of limited into how coarse a grit you can start with. The speed of the motor will make up for the coarse end of it, but then you're also limited at the finer end of grits. 
Once again, all of these electric sharpeners are designed to sharpen kitchen knives specifically, so you'll still get a great edge off them, but you're just limited in how fine an edge you can get. Another slight downside to electric sharpeners is that the guides, even the adjustable guides, you're limited to within that. And then some of these, they come with a set guide. So for example, this Chef's Choice machine is set to sharpen at 15 degrees and you can't change that. It's a great sharpening angle for kitchen knives, but you're just limited to that. So be aware when you're picking your electric sharpener. Electric sharpeners are great for home chefs who care about their knives, but they wanna be able to sharpen them really quickly. So if you really love cooking and you want a nice edge on your knife, but you don't wanna spend a lot of time sharpening, then having an electric sharpener in your kitchen ready to go is a really good option. Now we're moving on to what I think is perhaps the best method for sharpening your kitchen knives, and that is sharpening stones. Stones are really basic. They're very simple. They're just a flat abrasive that you drag your knife across. That's it. Sharpening with stones is great because of the level of control that it offers. Now, all of this control is based on skill, but you can select the angle. You can sharpen knives of any size, any shape. You can vary the pressure. It's all up to you as to how you want to sharpen your knives with stones. They're extremely flexible. They're also available in a huge range of grits. You can go from extremely coarse stones to really, really fine stones, finer than what you would probably need for kitchen knives, but you've got those options there within stones. You can also get them in a wide range of materials. So some materials will cut quicker than others. Other materials will wear faster than others. They've all got pros and cons, and you've got a wide range of options to pick from. Sharpening with stones also doesn't need a lot of complicated setup. You can just plunk it on your countertop, usually get it wet or add some oil to it, and then you're ready to go. You're ready to sharpen. Very quick and very easy to sharpen your kitchen knives on stones. But sharpening stones, they aren't perfect. The biggest downside to using stones is that it requires a bit of skill and patience to be able to sharpen your knives really well. It's not difficult to use stones to make a blunt knife sharper, but to get a really fine edge on your kitchen knives is gonna take a little bit of practice. Another downside to them, some stones like water stones are gonna need regular maintenance. There are certain water stones that you need to soak them in water before you use them. So an impromptu carving session isn't exactly on the cards with those. You need to wait about, you know, maybe 15 to 20 minutes for them to soak. And then all water stones will need flattening on a regular basis, just to make sure that that surface is giving your knives a nice edge. Sharpening stones are great for anyone who wants the best possible edge on their knives. If you've got a lot of high-end knives you care deeply about, learning how to take care of them how to sharpen them on stones is probably the best way to go. If you've also got a lot of shapes and sizes of kitchen knives, then stones offer the most versatility. I did mention having to learn the skill of sharpening as a downside, but some people will see learning a new skill as a positive thing. Sharpening by hand is an activity that a lot of people find relaxing, that they like to have that skill. So maybe that would be a benefit for you. Before we wrap up this video, there are a couple of honorable mentions I wanna give for options of sharpening your kitchen knives. The first would be having your knives professionally sharpened. If you don't wanna go through the hassle of picking a sharpener or learning how to sharpen yourself, then finding a local sharpener who's well-reviewed is a really good option to go with as well. It's usually fairly cost-effective if you're only having your knives sharpened a couple of times a year and you have a low number of knives. So bear that in mind, you can have someone else sharpen your knives. The second honorable mention would be sharpening steels. Sharpening steels are a great way to maintain an already sharp knife. But if your knife is blunt, then we would recommend picking one of these options to make it sharp again. Having a steel in your kitchen will help you maintain that edge, but it's not a great option for sharpening a blunt knife. So. Which one of these are your favorites for sharpening kitchen knives? Perhaps you've already got one of these that you use to sharpen your knife. Let us know why you picked that one in the comments below. If there are any of these that you would like to get, they're all linked in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing. We regularly upload videos about sharpening 
all different kinds of sharpeners and tools. So hopefully we'll see you again soon.